Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Entity Framework Core video. And if you haven't been following along since the start, feel free to go check out my very first video of Entity Framework on this channel. We have an ASP.NET Core web app that we've been working on and writing to our database, modifying it, uh, reading from it, all, all the good stuff. And it makes it really simple to do so. And I do have a playlist if you want to go find that and check out the videos from the start to where I am now. I'm not sure how much longer I'll be going on with Entity Framework. I keep finding new things to talk about, um, so so who knows. But hopefully you guys appreciate it. And if you do, if you like it, uh, feel free to hit subscribe. We're really picking up steam on this channel, and I really appreciate it. Um, so we're going to talk about the attach method and Entity Framework and the attach method of a context. And then we're also going to talk about how to delete. Both of these things are really simple, really easy, and hopefully you find them that way too. So what is the attachment? You can think of it this way. It's a way to substitute having to query the database for an object and then do something with it. If you remember when we did the update, I did a way where I queried the database with entity framework. I said, retrieve it where ID is equal to this and then modify you know, this column to equal this and then save the change. Well, instead of having to, at the very beginning, read from the database and that, uh, retrieve this object, we're gonna use this attach. And it says pretty, pretty well here, that is the entity is placed into the context in the unchanged state, just as if it had been read from the database. So it's like a substitution of reading from the database. And if that doesn't make sense, hopefully it will in practice. And uh, I think this will be a fairly quick video but I have this row right here, I want to delete. Let's say that's like a requirement. So we're gonna delete this user from my users table. And I guess I'm just going to do that in the index action of my home controller because it's the first kind of code, I guess, that gets run. So if I wanted to, I could say, you know, I could say var user is equal to, and then I'd have to actually do this in the using statement because we'd be using the demo context. I would say, you know, db dot users dot where, and then I'd have to say where ID is equal to seven, and then we'd retrieve it, and then I would delete it and go from there. But instead, we're going to use that attach method, and we're going to say var user is equal to a new user model. And since ID in our case is the primary key, right, of seven, we can just instantiate where ID is equal to seven. And I'm not gonna worry about giving, you know, age and email and name and username values. All we really need is ID seven because that's the primary key. That's that's the thing that will narrow down one item from the rest in this table. So now I can do db.attach and I can attach to our context this user. And just like it said in the Microsoft documentation, it's just like I read from the database and retrieved this object. And now we can do db.remove, which as you could guess, deletes from the database. However, there's one more step we need to do, and that is to save changes. If you remember, if we don't do this, you won't see any changes happen in our database. It won't commit those changes, and uh, it'll be a waste of time. So let's put a breakpoint right before this, just to show you, like before and after it saves the change. So I'm gonna run this and our breakpoint should be hit like right when this starts running. Cause it's the first view the user will see the index. And here we go. Uh, we attached the user, we removed from it, but we didn't save yet. So if I refresh now, nothing will change, right? We still have this Troy user. But if I go ahead and hit F11, it'll save the change. We can refresh and it'll be gone. And uh, that's it, that's, <laughs> that's basically it. We, we found a way to create an object as if we read from the database and retrieved it. Uh, we attached it to our context and then we removed it from the database and then saved our change. Pretty simple, but uh, hopefully you found it useful and I hope to see you guys in the next videos. Take care and um, yeah, have a good one.